Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another book review on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at Arms and Accoutrements of the Mounted Police, 1873 to 1973, by Phillips and Clatcher. Now, on a, maybe maybe this puts me on a little bit of a Canadian streak here now. Uh, Philip Rogers, one of the two authors of this book, was also a co-author on the Ross Rifle story. Uh, fortunately, the problems, the, the editorial issues of the Ross Rifle story don't really carry over to this book. This is actually a nicely written and readable book, covering exactly what the cover says. So you might wonder who cares about the Mounted Police, also what Mounted Police? Well, this is uh, what we would call today the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Uh, when the time period for this book started, they were the Northwest Mounted Police, whose jurisdiction was northwestern Alaska, or uh, northwestern Canada, not all of Canada. Um, and what makes them interesting to me is that they're very much like, well, this is Canada's version of the Wild West, uh, both geographically and chronologically. And the armaments of the Northwest Mounted Police fall very much into line with what was being used in the Old West. Uh, there were some arms that were being supplied by Britain, but in most cases, the Mounties, as they existed back then, uh, really preferred American arms. They preferred Colt revolvers. Um, they had one of the coolest versions of, I think, one of the coolest Winchester lever action rifles out there. Uh, they had a, a carbine musket style, so like with a full length wooden handguard version of the Winchester 1876. That is a super cool gun. And it was mostly acceptable to them. The book here, of course, talks about the order and the order for and use of those carbines, as well as some of the problems that they had with them, um, in addition to all of the other arms that the mounted police used. When these guys started, they were very much sort of a rough and tumble frontier organization. Not a lot of men, uh, you know, huge land area that was covered by these little tiny mounted police patrol stations. And it's, it's a part of the Old West story that we don't normally hear down here in the United States. So if you're in the US, I think there's, there's still going to be a fair number of you guys who will get a kick out of, out of the history of what became the RCMP. If you're in Canada, of course, this is a, uh, a much more culturally relevant book to you because they're your Royal Canadian Mounted Police now. Um, and it's just a cool insight into what some of the guns uh, that we normally think of as being American, what else they were actually being used for at that same time. Now, uh, the RCMP, or the RNWMP, uh, was also using a variety of other guns. Uh, the use of the Ross rifle is in here. Not a, not a great story, uh, the, the police experience with the Ross, but that's covered in here, uh, as well as Snyder's, uh, Lee Metford's, Longley's, Lee Enfield's. Uh, as well as a bunch of other stuff that was used. It's not just small arms. So this covers machine guns and artillery that were also uh, in the possession in the use of the mounted police. Uh, swords, holsters, as I say, accoutrements. So holsters, um, saddles, a lot of that sort of ancillary equipment. There's even a short section on lances because the mounted police had lances for a little while. Anyway, um, if you look this book up on, on Amazon, you will find it expensive and out of print. However, uh, I did find a website that has them uh, at a very reasonable price, probably the original cover price of 35 bucks. I will include the link to that down in the description text below, uh, so you can order there. Um, I check if you're reading this after the video, if you're watching this after the video publishes, make sure that that link, when you go there, that they still have it in stock. I suspect, I don't know how many that, copies they still have, but I suspect they will sell out uh, once it's publicized. So. Um, if you're interested, pick up a copy. Cool, uh, cool little back corner of history that a lot of us aren't aware of. Thanks for watching.